Hey everybody, I'm Eric Skinner. And I'm Greg Young. And we're both here today to chat with you about the new Zero Trust capabilities that have been announced by Trend Micro. So hey Greg, why, why is Zero Trust getting so much attention right now? It's getting a lot of attention now, although it's really the changes have been coming for a few years. Uh, a few things. One is attackers have changed how they're doing things and the sort of legacy architectures we have aren't really working that well. And second is that complexity has really overtaken us. And how do we deal with that complexity? Well, the old models aren't working, so we have to look at new things such as uh, how we assess risk and posture and new ways to do with our software-defined enterprises. Right. At the end of the day, a lot of it is about making life harder for attackers, right? So that they're they're inherently less trusted in the environment. They're not getting they're not getting to piggyback on the trust that is inherent in a lot of people's architectures today. Right. And doing this without just adding more people to it as well. Right. So when people say zero trust and, and they and they know what it means, what 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 do they mean? We have this old saying in security, which wasn't really good, which was trust, then verify. And it's really gone to the reverse now. We have to verify, verify things before we trust them. And that's fundamentally the way it should be. We have so much information about who people and things are. We should really enable that information into our decisions. Right. So uh, so Trend's doing two things as part of this announcement. And, and w w let's let's look at each of those. So first of all, there's there's risk insights, uh, which is really about assessing the uh, the health of users' identities and, and their devices and the applications they're connecting to uh, in order to uh, to help inform a better zero trust decision. So so why are risk insights so important, Greg? Uh, twofold. One is that the decision to trust something is not binary and shouldn't be based on old information like, hey, you're an employee, uh, therefore we trust you. And this idea of posture is crucial to this as well. It has to be real time and based on a whole bunch of information that we collect and we can utilize. It shouldn't be an old static or binary kind of decision. Right. And uh, and a lot of vendors seem to be glossing over this right now. You know, it's a it's a step that's getting skipped in all the marketing about zero trust anyway. Yeah, absolutely. So uh, there's this, a lot of sort of focus on just uh, either taking old products and just putting zero trust on them or uh, not looking at the underlying sort of posture of both these decisions. So it's one thing to say, yeah, we're going to change how uh, complex things are uh, or we're going to change an approach for making things more software defined, how we're tackling security. But this, this idea of posture and making these risk decisions is fundamental. Getting information and making these decisions on it has to be the foundation for any zero trust architecture. Right. So Trend is taking this very seriously. We are assessing uh, risk across the, the breadth of the organization in a, in a very detailed way. And uh, we're, we're piggybacking off the amazing visibility that we already get from our XDR solution. Uh, so what we're doing is, is uh, assessing the health of devices based not only on threat activity, but also based on the security posture of that device, whether it's properly configured, whether it's uh, got vulnerabilities in the OS or applications and so on. But then we're also looking at identities, uh, helping assess, for example, if that identity has been compromised, if that identity is now being used to send out internal phishing emails, things like that, uh, the health of the applications that uh, users are attempting to connect to, and, uh, and even the kinds of data that they're accessing or transferring. So this really provides uh, really strong visibility uh, for a SOC team that might be doing investigation of, of, of an incident or, or a, a potential incident, but much more than that, it's uh, powering decisions in an automated way. Eric, where, where is the information coming to make these insights? Well, we get some benefit from the XDR platform that is able to provide a lot of insight into threat activity and suspicious activity in the environment. And that helps inform part of the insight. But we're also gathering sensor data from uh, our endpoint, from the email system, from the uh, Azure AD environment, from network stacks uh, that are present in the customer environment, third party and otherwise. So we have a range of different sensors, uh, the ones I mentioned in more uh, that uh, get calculated uh, into into the risk assessment for for these users. Okay, and how is all this information presented? 
Well, you know, one of the one of the things that becomes readily apparent is that uh, you know this information is useful for uh, SOC teams and managers and and maybe even CISOs to have a look at the overall health state of uh, their organization or individual users and look at trending over time and exploring uh, the the particular reasons why health scores are high or low and we do that through dashboards in the Vision One environment like the one you're seeing here, uh, but we're also uh, providing full access to the risk insights through APIs because that's exactly what's needed for automated decision making uh, for any other layer in the environment, whether that's a third party application that's trying to apply zero trust principles or uh, a customer's own applications. Uh, and uh, you know, I think that's a great opportunity to chat. In fact, about secure access, which is one of the uh, other components of our of our story here today. Uh, but it's something that really uh, customers spend a lot of time thinking about access control and zero trust these days. Tell us why that is, Greg. Yeah. So uh, secure access is 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 you know the biggest part of uh, security right now that that step just as you're connecting into resources it's we're talking about it a lot uh, in zero trust because historically uh, you, you know attackers have been using lateral movement uh, they know that if they go from a low trust zone trying to get over to a higher trust one or get from a uh, unmanaged or poorly managed zone to another one it's really changed everything of course a lot of our decisions historically have been done around sort of uh, just a few criteria where you're trying to go and what your membership is and a lot of times it's very very static but access is crucial and that's the first step towards security exactly and that's why a little bit later this year we're going to be uh, releasing some capabilities around uh, secure access in, in two aspects uh, zero trust network access which is known as ztna out there uh, which helps establish these secure point-to-point -point connections for for example an employee to a specific corporate application without requiring vpn and crucially based on that risk insight on a continuous assessment about whether that user should have that access. And then broadening out to SASE or Secure Access Service Edge, which uh, helps a customer expand beyond that ZTNA connection to look at all the connections in the environment and uh, assess the risk of connections to uh, external SaaS applications, internal applications, uh, branch to branch connections and so on based on risk insights and have enforcement ability uh, to stop connections uh, if the continue assessment shows that something in that health status has changed. Okay, Eric, so we, we've covered two really sort of fundamental things about this announcement. The first is the risk insights, the get, getting new kinds of information to base decisions on, and then secure access to uh, actually implement that information into a security relevant way. What's Trend doing that makes our zero trust solution stand apart? I think there's two critical things. The first is that we're taking risk insights so seriously and providing the industry's best insight into uh, what's going on in a customer environment based on the breadth of what we take into consideration as we calculate that risk insight, uh, email systems, identity systems, SaaS applications, and so on. And, uh, and if the customer wants to use that with their third party zero trust applications, they absolutely can. But uh, we feel we're also delivering a well integrated platform with those risk insight capabilities, the secure access capabilities uh, that leverage things like our existing endpoint uh, capability and uh, that get well integrated into the Vision One console. So it makes it simpler to achieve uh, a uh, really positive step in a customer's zero trust strategy. All right, well, hey, thanks for spending time with me uh, chatting about this today. Greg, I appreciate that. Yeah, thanks, Eric. And there's gonna be more information available, of course, on all this. Uh, so look forward to talking to you more. Thanks.